Welcome to our EGM Securities Update and today we're fortunate to have renowned author, FX trader, old Kenya hand, even from Nanyuki, and uh, that's another story for another day. Um, thanks very much for making time for us today, Ben. We really appreciate it. Um, can you give us a perspective on what you're seeing in the markets? 20 years of experience, you've been looking at these things, you've seen everything. What, 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 do, you, what do you read into what we've got in front of us? Well, I think the markets are dominated by the US yes. and its policies, its president, and, and actually its interest rate. So um, we've had some exceptional growth numbers out of the US and some impressive uh, employment numbers also. And actually Wednesday, the focus was brought into the US because it was the FOMC meeting on interest rate policy. Just a quarter point. Yeah, just a quarter point, but actually there were some decent takeaways from that meeting, and I, I, I picked out four. Mm. One, the, um, they took out the word accommodative yes, from, yes. Their, from their jargon. You've got to be a linguistic specialist at yeah. times to read these central bankers. So what, what did that tell you? Mr. Powell, mm. uh, the Fed chair, gave us a, what, it, what he thought about it. it was actually, he just take, he's taken it out, but he, he's going to continue to gradually raise interest rates. Okay, I think a more important takeaway was actually the committee mm. has raised its median expectation for growth mm. from 2.8% to 3.1%. Okay, for this year or next year? For for the for the future. Future. Okay, and we saw yesterday uh, GDP came out second quarter final reading at 4.2%. So growth is on fire uh, in in America, and that may be partly because of uh, a fiscal stimulus. Yes, and in some so, people call yeah. it a sugar high. A sugar it. high, and actually Powell mentioned that he thought markets were moving higher because of this, uh, this, this fiscal stimulus. Okay, the third takeaway, I think, is that um, he, he nailed the point of inflation, mm. all right? And he said that inflation is around 2%, we're keeping our eye on it, but that's not gonna affect our policy. But actually the fourth takeaway is that they wish to continue to raise interest rates. Mm. One more time this year, penciled in for December, three for next year, and one for 2020. Mm. Okay, so the markets took that in their stride. Okay, and actually I wanted to bring you the chart of gold. Yes, yep. so this is, uh, just for everyone to see, this is gold, yep. 1183. Yep. Um, it seems to have broken down, it was in a trading range for a while, but I don't know, anyway. You yeah, tell well, me. So, well, well, my view is that um, we have something called the efficient market hypothesis. So, I also felt very strongly that the US would raise interest rates uh, on Wednesday, which they did. I also feel that, that growth is impressive. And so, nothing um, to me was uh, anything new. Okay, so if you have the efficient market hypothesis, which suggests that all known information is in the price, yes. then you have to ask yourself the question why has gold come down by 16 points? And I personally think. Uh, that is one, a consequence of US dollar strength in general, and just a minor correction. Mm. And I personally think that if it was trading at 1200 before the announcement, then it should be trading around 1200 again. So you'd be a buyer here? I'm a buyer because I think there is, um, there is an amount of uncertainty in the market that we haven't really priced in. Okay? We have a lot of optimism in uh, US stock markets, and the US stock markets have reach several new highs, mm. whether it's the NASDAQ or the S&P this year. But I think there's also some risk that hasn't been priced in. And a very clear example of that is Tesla. Mm. Which are Talk to us, because yeah. I, I find myself the two people I wake up in the morning yeah. to see what they've tweeted. One is Donald Trump and the yeah. other one is Elon Musk. <laughs> and both I find quite insane, well, unputdownable. Insane insofar as they're, they're un. You, you don't want to miss what they say. Mm. Okay, well, Tesla I've been following for a long time, and as you quite rightly point out, mm. I won't call them Maverick CEO or Maverick President, but these two men are very powerful in what they wish to express in terms of Twitter. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So a few months back, Elon Musk tweeted that he was going to take Tesla private. In fact, he squeezed everybody. Yep. There was a huge rally. I remember exactly. he, he must have he must have killed, burned uh, the shorts. And they had funding secured. Yes. Okay. And almost a day later, he retracted that comment, mm. and the stock collapsed. Okay. So now the SEC in America is taking him to court for fraud. Mm. 
okay, and Tesla got hammered yesterday down 12% on the back of that information, okay? So they, they're probably looking to shift him out. And so the question is, does a company that doesn't make money, mm. has a limited cash and a maverick CEO, does it survive or does it collapse? Okay, and this is one of the risks I see mm. in markets like the NASDAQ. Stocks like Facebook and Twitter mm. also, in recent weeks, they have had falls of over 20%, yeah. okay, on, on particular days. Yes. So in general, you have this sort of nice um, meandering up of markets based on fast confidence, move. and then you have this, these massive yeah. collapses, okay? And those are the risks that I think are underpriced in the market. So I'd say trade with caution, always. And I think that you know, gold, going back to gold, is a, is a safe haven trade for times of stress in the markets. Excellent. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure. Mm -hmm.